Anambra. IGP removes head of security arrangement DIG Ebony case 24 hours to election. Welcome to the news and please subscribe to our channel. Barely 24 hours to the Saturday Anambra State Governorship election, the Inspector General of Police has removed the Deputy Inspector General DIG Joseph Ebonike as the head of a team for the election. Though when contacted on the development, First Public Relations Officer C.P. Frank Mba confirmed that DIG Ebonike has stepped down. No reason was given for the removal of the experienced senior officer, who is an indigenous of Anambra State. DIG Ebonike has since been replaced with Acting Deputy Inspector General of Police in charge of operations, DIG Zaki Ahmad. Public Relations Officer attached to the Anambra Election Monitoring Team, DSP in Kurika, Modi, while announcing the sudden change of Baton, said the development would not affect the conduct of the election. Recall that Inspector General of Police, IGP Usman Ali Kaba, while in Anambra recently, assured residents of a state of adequate security, noting that the police operatives have no reason to compromise, having been paid their allowances ahead of their special duty. Hmm. This one is fishy. Sincerely, I have to I have to say it out. You know, changing making such changes um just few hours to election. I mean it is it is well let's just hope and everything goes out um good because of course today is the long awaited day of the governorship elections in Anambra State. And sincerely I wish them success. I wish you are going to go out and mass and you know elect someone who is going to be competent enough not somebody who is their person i keep saying it when it comes to things that is going to affect not just you alone it is not your family property it is not your compound people it is not your societal or community property this is what is going to is going to affect more than one million people so what are you going to do you are going to make sure that as you are saying oh this thing will affect me do you know that whatever affects you in a very positive way, but influences others in another bad way? Let's say, for instance, you put in somebody that you elect or you, you cast your votes based on favoritism, it is going to backfire. That is just the truth. Let them put someone who merits that particular position, who is going to come in neutral on all grounds. The person is going to be neutral on favoritism, is going to be neutral on ethnicism, it is going to be neutral on tribalism. The person will be neutral on nepotism. The person will be neutral on religious sentiment. All those things are very, very important. Because if you put in someone who is not neutral, I tell you, a person who comes in via favoritism will think that that particular place, he or she, is going to use that office to only bless those that voted for him or her. That is the truth. We have seen issues like that for a very long time. We have seen issues like that several times. This person, you know, comes in and he votes for this, but I mean, you, he, he takes care of this particular local government, you know, because when he hears that this particular local government really voted for him, it is not supposed to be done so. If it's just somebody based on uh, uh, religious uh, um, sentiment, he's going to come in and all is he's going to be what we call half sentiment when dealing with people of the other religion. That is just it. What it means is that the equity will not be general. This particular place will be receiving special treatment, while the other places will be receiving just, you know, just treatment. Meanwhile, everybody is supposed to be equal under any democratic setting. That means if somebody from this particular religion commits a crime because he comes from that particular religion, that someone who is seated in the position of the governorship, of, of the governor's seat, that means that particular person is going to work scot-free. But if the person from another religion commits that crime, what happens? He, the law will allow to take his course on that person. That is in no way fair. It will breed indifference even among the people. It is going to be like a war is going on. You, now, if you not allow nepotism to come to play, <laughs> of, <laughs> you allow nepotism to come to play, do you know what it means? The person will think that I'm in that position because you put me there. Meanwhile, it is a public office. Yes, you put someone who is selfish there, then you are completely finished as a state. Why? Because this person will see, you know, there is nothing that he is going to be selfless in doing. 
The citizens of Anambra State need somebody who knows or feels what they are feeling. Someone who knows how they feel, who knows how difficult things have been for them, and someone who will make sure that in the next four years, when he or she will be living, or in the next eight years, it is going to be like, yes, we met, we, I met this particular state in level 10, I've been able to push them positively into level 40 or 50. That is how it should be. That is the kind of person the citizens of Anambra State deserve. Yes. For once, we should have a particular person that when the person comes in and is about to leave, you want to, citizens and electorates voluntarily want the person to stay. Sincerely, I don't think that that has happened before in Nigerian history. I mean, they should change. That is why I said Nigerian citizens and not just Nigerian citizens alone, the citizens of Anambra State, they need somebody that will change status quo. Status quo is people come in and they're selfish. You come in and you're selfless. You come in and your cabinet members are bringing out policies that are going to favor them alone. And what do you do as the governor of that state that represents the best interests of the people? You challenge your cabinet members. You say, no, you are not going to enforce this particular one. Because why? Because it does not support the totality of the people. That is it. I just hope that an number of people, they do not, you know, go out hungry. That is why if you're going out to vote, please do not go out hungry. Do not, so that you don't vote with your mind be clouded of what you are going to use, whatever they share, whatever peanuts they share, how you are going to use it to, if it is, uh, um, if it is, uh, how am I going to put it now? Maybe it is, it's, you have been craving for one particular food and you get used to buy it and that is it. That means you have traded your conscience, your ability to choose, your right to choose for what a plate of food. And you are going to live with that particular choice for how many years? And I'm people, I hope that they are awake already and they are not still sleeping. No sleeping on the bicycle. This is a moving bicycle. You are not meant to sleep. This particular decision that the Anambra people are taking today is going to live with them for a very long time. That is why it is necessary that they go with a very clear mind. That is why I do not know why up to date the INEC has not been able. I do not know what their reasons are. But sincerely, electronic voting and electronic communication... I mean, accumulation of results would have been like the best thing ever. Because why? People will not need to leave their houses. They will not need to leave their safe zone. They will not need to leave the comfort of their homes. And nobody will need to know who you voted for except you want to tell the person. You just cast your vote in your house quietly. Then the result comes out very quietly. In short, it is going to even save resources. It is a very wonderful way of, it's a very cost-effective way of doing elections. I just hope that in Nigeria and of, I mean, in Anambra State and in Nigeria as a whole, come 2023, it is going to be implored. So this particular election going on now and that these changes that have been made by the Nigerian police force, I just hope that it is for the good and at the end of the day, the, ex the election go free and fair and of course, the people's choice is what matters. If finally, you know, they give them their, their choice of candidate. On this note, we have come to the end of the news. We say thank you for tuning in to listen. Until I come your way next time, enjoy the rest of your day.